Hello again, friends. This is Oscar Montes Iga. I'm at the Uncork Vintage Academia. Uh, we're at the Booze Library today to bring you a special edition. Uh, I'm a certified wine and spirits instructor for the International Wine and Spirits Guild and also a certified bourbon steward with the Stave and Thief Society. Uh, but today, what I'm bringing to you is a very special edition uh, on a very special whiskey. Um, I'm going to be reviewing a whiskey that was actually just released today and it's a very limited boutique production uh, and I'm very excited about this whiskey because it's actually quite tasty. Um, move on in, we'll move on to the notes here in a minute but um, what I do want to also say is I hope you, have a, you had a great and safe and super spooky Halloween. So um, this is a very special edition on Halloween. Um, night um, with a very spooky theme whiskey that we're going to talk about in a minute um, but I want to say that hopefully you had a, a great one and the next days to come as we go into celebrating uh, the Sawin and uh, Dia de los Muertos, All Saints Day and All Souls Day and um, we have a lot to be thankful for in this darkest darkest of time throughout the year as we renew the light that comes and shines down on us um, in a way we, we're you know celebrating the end of harvest for many uh, crops many many agricultural um, many agricultural uh, scenes or, or environments um, and for for some part I think whiskey speaks to harvest in a very true nature that you know what we're tasting typically is from the ground um, whether we're talking about the grain itself or the the trees um, that produce the barrels that the whiskey is typically aged in but enough with that I, I want to introduce you to the monster mash and I stopped by today to uh, visit friends at the uh, Steel Austin Whiskey Company, um, the distillery here in the heart of Austin. And uh, today they released a very special, special uh, label called the Monster Mash as part of the Distillery Reserve series. The Monster Mash is a very boutique uh, bottling of um, just over 400 bottles total coming out of two barrels uh, with a very unique mash bill that I'll tell you more about in a minute. Um, it was great to go out there seeing uh, people be safe more than anything in the quarantine um, or the stay at home orders. I mean, we're not staying at home, but as we go out, you can definitely see people um, being cautious about the environment and, and how they interact with people uh, which I'm sure is going to continue but with that said Steel Austin did a pretty good job at welcoming uh, visitors having a fun environment uh, creating a good vibe um, to be able to release this whiskey and not to bore you to death with that detail but I cannot say this anymore that we need to support these local craft distilleries breweries wineries that we have around us because um, like a lot of sectors in the food and beverage business, in the hospitality business, in the travel and tourism business, in the hospitality industry in general, uh, they are quite affected. So I was so glad that I could go out there and visit um, my friend Josh at the Austin, um, um, still Austin Whiskey uh, Company. And I also met a face that, you know, I've, I've only seen online. Uh, through whiskey groups and today I was um, able to meet him out there out of happenstance it just happened so uh, hi Nick I'm giving you a shout out to Nick to Josh and everybody out there that was at this at the distillery today um, so kudos to you for being safe and cool and playing it hip and supporting local businesses which they need uh, especially when they're coming out with something as unique as as tasty as this whiskey which I'll tell you more about um, this was aged just over two years. It has a barrel time of at least about 26 months. Uh, the mash bill itself is a little unholy, as they call it, and a medley of um, five grains, and that includes white corn. It includes winter hawk wheat, 
Texas rye, malted barley, and malted rye. And what's really unique about what I have here, just for show and tell for you guys, um, I have a medley here of white and red corn. Um, that is the base of um, all bourbon and most whiskey. Corn, corn, not necessarily these two grains. Um, and then I have some barley, I have some rye, and I have some wheat. So if you ever want to have your hands on these, um, shoot me a message. We'll chat about your uh, spirits education in the future. So they include five grains, malted rye, malted barley, Texas rye, winter hog wheat, and white corn. Um, the bottling happened from, again, two barrels. They produced 414 bottles or so. Um, and it is bottled um, at cask strength also. So this is a barrel proof uh, whiskey. But I'm not gonna bore you to death with a lot of detail. Shoot them a message if you're curious about uh, how they do it, what they do. Uh, they actually are very open to educating um, the guests at the distillery, give you a tour if they're available to do so, or answer any questions about distillation in general or what it, what it means to be a whiskey. Um, Today we don't have the best lining just because I went a little spooky with your red, red filter. Uh, but I already tasted this whiskey and I have my notes. So I don't want you to critique the lining. But you're going to be looking at a clear light uh, light canary color with a straw transition and a very thin watery edge uh, uh, in the glass. Um, by the way, this was bottled at 53.55 alcohol by volume, which is roughly 107.1 proof. And there is very slight heat on the nose. Uh, it's actually very balanced and calm. But as far as aromas, uh, aromas and bouquet, as far as fruits, I'm getting yellow apple, pear, quince. There's a cherry cordial um, profile, which if you're not necessarily sure what that means, think of um, almost like a branded cherry or one of those syrupy cherry centers inside a chocolate uh, that you may find out there. There's also hints of um, floral notes like rose petals and chamomile. It's also earthy. There's a little bit of muskiness, a little bit of um, patchouli, a little bit of honey or honeycomb. Uh, there's also a little bit of like cedar, like cedar plank, a little bit of sunflower seed, and then further into a lot more concentrated elevage uh, aromas of uh, butterscotch, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of latte or mocha, almost like a mix of milk chocolate with milk chocolate, sometimes with um, maybe a coffee influence, uh, hazelnut, there's quite a bit of hazelnut as well. And um, mint, mint slash eucalyptus, a little bit of very bright, refreshing um, herbs, fresh herbs. The nasal impact is drying. The aromas are um, adequate and simple for the production. The bouquet is adequate and complex for the elevage or the cellaring or the maturation in wood. Um, but it's got an average length and uh, fine character for aroma and bouquet. Let's give it a taste. On the palate, the, the mouthfeel effect is coating so it's got a very rich coating effect um, 
it has sufficient smooth alcohol and it's a medium full body whiskey uh, so it packs a punch on the way though as far as viscosity but itself the alcohol is very very balanced it's smooth it's not hot or generous even it's just quite sufficient working well with everything else around it uh, the primary taste is sweet secondary taste will be slight mix between bitterness and sourness and again a buttery smooth um, mouthfeel effect the primary flavors um, that I'm getting um, some are similar to the to the nose some are a little bit outside of what the nose gave me uh, but it's still very correlated so my aroma uh, profile in mouth my flavors are a little bit of corn uh, corn husk um, then some spices like cinnamon and baking spices the chamomile shows through the quince, the quince fruit, um, as far as your orchard fruits, still shows up. And further, um, I get peach and apricot brandy. Uh, quite elegant on the palate itself. Maybe not as complex as the nose, but it's still very elegant on the palate. And it's very, very harmonious. The balance is quite harmonious. The um, flavor intensity is medium. And... Um, it has some complexity I would call it slightly complex not as complex as the nose as I mentioned but the palate is complex uh, slightly with a very harmonious um, balance it also has a very long and pleasant finish so overall my my impression for this whiskey the monster mash is excellent it's a it's a excellent overall impression it's it's a very well crafted balanced refined uh, whiskey and I'll give you some pairing ideas in case you're a foodie also what I would personally pair with this whiskey besides kind of like the basic that makes sense that would work like a cheese and charcuterie board I would also pair uh, some waffles or pancakes and uh, maybe some some pork tamales or bean tamales maybe um, bean tostadas like a black bean tostada um, or fried or refried eggs um, so it's kind of um, for me hitting either the breakfast brunch lunch uh, section of of the diet or the palate diet um, but i think it is a very 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 uh, food friendly whiskey also so don't be afraid to, to grab some grub with your dram um, I'm just very excited that I was able to go out there today and taste this and get a hold of a couple bottles see some um, faces um, Josh and Nick out there uh, and just the lovely folks that were out there having fun and um, people watching if anything uh, it was a lot of fun but again um, I hope you can support um, your local distilleries your local breweries your local wineries they really needed uh, a lot of help if you're in the Austin area or even in Texas I'm sure the folks that still Austin can point out where you can find their whiskeys or uh, gin uh, or whether um, you know they can ship it to you or, or however you can find it um, close close to you uh, without further ado, um, if you have any questions about what bourbon means, not that this was a bourbon, but I made a previous post about bourbon in case you want to learn about bourbon um, and what defines a bourbon, um, check out one of my previous videos and you'll be able to um, review that as, as well as cognac um, and something else I reviewed. Uh, I think coming up next, you're going to see maybe a tequila or mezcal, which is kind of overdue to make an agave session. Um, with, with that said too, if you are in Central Texas or in Texas in general or if you are able to travel from outside the state and you'd like to partake on a formal education course um, or seminar with me uh, that covers brandies, 
whiskies, vodkas, tequila, mezcal, and sotol as well. With the International Wine Guild, I can um, happily arrange a private seminar with you one-on-one, -on -one, um, which is a 12-hour contact course. And um, you just need to shoot me a message so we can schedule it. And of course, if you have any questions, if you uh, want to visit the internationalwineguild.com website for, for what it entails to take the level one course on either wine or spirits. Um, and if you have any questions, you can find me at Uncorked Vintage Academia in Facebook or Uncorked Vintage ATX on Instagram. Uncorked Vintage ATX at Gmail is, um, is the address to email. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions and chat with you more about any beverage because I love beverages. They don't have to be alcoholic. Um, but thanks for watching. I hope you are subscribed to the YouTube channel uh, here at Uncork Vintage Academia. Hit us like, sub subscribe and share. If you know somebody that may take advantage of learning, um, learning videos about um, wine and spirits and adult beverages and so on, uh, feel free to share, I appreciate it. Uh, keep having a good rest of your Halloween uh, Eve and uh, Slancha. <laughs>